Hey everyone, this is without a doubt my most exciting anticipated snake breeding of the year. The person behind the camera may disagree a little bit with some other ball pythons that hopefully will be proving out genetics this year, but personally this one is my most anticipated, most excited. My day was like, okay, we're done with whatever else we're doing right now, we're getting to this kind of a moment, because this is seven years in the making. So we've been keep I've been keeping reptiles for 10 and a half 11 ish years now and at about three years in once I started to learn that like it was a business to breed reptiles and people do this professionally and keep all these animals and numbers have done the correct way I went I'm gonna be Colorado's boa person not knowing that there's already a Colorado boa person out there and I'm coming for you by the way eventually I'm coming for you you know who you are um, but there was already a boa person there, but we invested a lot of money in a lot of different high-end morphs and a lot of different things when it comes to boas, and we had a lot of setbacks, and I've talked about that in several podcasts and other videos in the past, if you want to go check those out. Um, but this year, we had our very first boa litter. So here it is. They were born a couple days ago. They've been hanging out in the incubator. They're going to shed soon, and I'm going to split them up into their individual uh, little containers. So some people, as I mentioned in the first ball python clutch uh, video a couple days ago, that some people like to leave them all together until they shed. Some people split them up immediately. I just left these guys in the incubator. Obviously, they weren't there because boas give live birth. I just put them in here and have changed the paper a couple times. You can already see they're kind of starting to go to the bathroom and getting a grody, and it's already been changed a couple times already. But... Super excited for this pairing. I love boa constrictors. I've always said I am a boa guy. I am so excited for this. And we have a couple more girls that are going to be up to size for this coming 2021 uh, fall breeding season for boas coming around this next time. But just so everyone is aware, this breeding was what we thought was a possible super ghost head call albino male to a call albino female. This pairing proves that he wasn't a super. So just like in ball pythons, the super is the um, the complete uh, homozygous form of the incomplete dominant. So hypo is an incomplete dominant trait, unlike in pythons where it's recessive. Um, and then the super would be where if you bred it to just a normal, every single baby would be a hypo. Clearly that's not the case because we have some normals here and some regular albinos. Um, but that's okay. Totally fine with that. Um, so Church, who was our ghost, head albino, bred to Upsilon, who was acquired under somewhat dubious circumstances. Um, and maybe at some point I'll get into that when I do like a full like boa, like show off video or something like that. But we have a really cool collection of these guys. So basically what we have here is we have, this is the hypo. So that is the hypomelanistic, and then it will be double het for albino and anery type one. So basically, this thing will be het moon glow. And so for anyone who doesn't know about moon glow genetics, that is a three gene animal where it's a visual hypo, a visual call albino, and a visual anery type one, which looks really cool. All of the ones that aren't hypo will be het snow. So we have a sun glow, a sun glow, albino, 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 normal, normal, hypo, hypo, hypo. And so all of these are het anery. They're not showing it because Church was a visual anery. So all these guys are going to be really cool. I don't know if we're going to hold on to any of them, if any. Um, if we do, it might be one of the hypos or maybe this really cool albino. I haven't sexed any of them yet, and I will after they shed out. Um, and after I get a few meals in them, I'll decide who I want to hold back and who I'm going to give up for either like um, you know, a, a bulk sell for like a distributor or for individual sales. Maybe I'll put them on a morph market because we'll actually have a fair few animals to put onto our morph market this year, but we'll see. But anyway, just super, super excited for these ones. I really hope that, you know, we'll be, you know, producing boas with a little bit more, mm, not to say precision, but effectiveness and uh, a little bit more often than we have because boas, they take a lot longer to come up than ball pythons. Ball pythons, two and a half, three years old is what most people consider like baseline for their female ball pythons. 
because I started out as boas, I always take mine longer, which is why a lot of people uh, make fun of me for being a four to five year old breeder for ball pythons instead of two and a half, three years old. Most of our boas that we'll be breeding will be five to seven years old, at least, because they, they we like to slow grow our animals. We want to have long, healthy lives and we don't want to burn them out by breeding every single year. So that's why even our ball pythons skip years just like our boas do and will continue to do so. So. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll keep you updated on how all of these are doing as well as all of the other clutches of ball pythons that we have going this year. Stay tuned for more reptile content. Hope you enjoyed this this video. Please like and subscribe if you can. Um, I may make a playlist about all of the different like babies and stuff over the years. Just like you can watch like the snake breedings of all the different kinds. But... You know, I have plenty of other playlists and other things you want to check out. Please check those out if you can. Subscribe, click the playlist. Helps my click-through rate. Let's YouTube know that I exist. Uh, and hope you're having a great day, and we'll check you next time.